G'day humans, Chris Stead here. I want to uh, let you guys in on a little bit of a conversation I just had with Thomas Dexmeyer, who is the country manager for HTC here in Australia. Now, whenever there's an HTC product, a new VR headset, for example, or VR headsets specifically, uh, it's usually Thomas who would take local media through a bit of a, um, a briefing and a run through of the product and what it offers and what you can expect if you are to pick one up. And, uh, and gives a, some really good insights into the industry, the business overall, what they're doing. I actually really enjoy having uh, those sessions with Tom because you always learn a fair bit. Now, I, he was taking me through the latest HTC uh, XR Elite headset, uh, which has just come out, which I'll be doing a review of shortly on the channel, so stay tuned for that. And after a quite a lengthy demo, demo uh, we started to have a bit of a chat about the industry in general and everything, and he spoke quite a bit about how he's, how he, they felt that the XR Elite is really kind of trying to make this VR headset a lot more consumer friendly and more accessible to the average Joes and everything. But the reality is the price here in Australia anyway is still $2,099, which is definitely not consumer, or not mainstream consumer friendly. That's still very a niche uh, product for really for the very you know tip of the spear high-end adopters uh and you know it was only moments after this briefing that the MetaQuest 3 was announced it's 829 dollars here in australia 130 dollars basically and that's uh still you know that's still expensive absolutely but as a consumer investment it's obviously a lot more user friendly so we're talking about the price and uh why it's so expensive and what's going to bring it down and, and that's where we start to offer some insights here that I thought would be quite interesting for you if you're also thinking about that now obviously you spoke to the the quality of the build and the products that they offer especially with the pancake lenses um, and how much more trickier they make the entire thing but what was particularly interesting is you're saying that the, the raw hardware cost is what you're seeing in that price because they don't do anything with the data so here's uh, reasoning for why the Oculus or sorry the MetaQuest 3 can be so much significantly cheaper is it doesn't actually reflect the true hardware costs because what Facebook is effectively doing there is uh, tracking all of your uh, the way that you to interact with the device and the way that you use your eyes to look around and all that type of stuff to advertisers and the advertising market so they're using the data that they acquire from you and are selling that to therefore bring down the overall cost of the hardware to get into more hands which means more people use it which means they get more data so that's kind of that loop there uh, which makes a bit of sense and uh, so that was kind of one of the things that he was pointing out as saying, well, you know, HTC doesn't do that. We don't use your data. We don't sell your data. And that is, that is one of the ways that we can't really, well, that, so it's one of the ways that he justified the hardware cost being so high and that the actual cost of, say, a MetaQuest is, should be a lot more, but they sell the data and they make, them, they make it kind of that way. So, you know, that, that's may, maybe here and there to you, depending on whether or not you give a stuff if your data is sold or not, and you'd rather just save on a VR headset. Uh, but that wasn't the most interesting thing because what I was really what I was really kind of trying to get out of him was like what's going to bring this price down because we've seen lots, lots of iterations like you know like the, the Pro 2 the Pro they were over two grand the, the Flow was really quite expensive even though it was kind of uh, uh, very um, I guess experimental but uh, the, the price has kind of stayed in that 2000 plus thing here in Australia for all of the high-end headsets as they've come out the Pro 2 the Valve Index uh, the uh, we've seen kind of the the, the Vajos and and that as well being up in that kind of really high price bracket so what's going to drive that price down uh, and the what I thought was quite interesting was he's saying it's all about 5g and it's how 5G is taken up and how 5g is kind of um, utilized better around the world so, he was saying that a lot of the telcos are a bit disappointed because, well not disappointed, but 5G doesn't really hold much value for consumers when it comes to making a phone call. For the most part, 4G is doing it fine. So they don't have that kind of uh, impetus for 5G to really become latched onto and the latency to be really, you know, it's come to come ubiquitous around uh, the country. Uh, but they see, he believes, Thomas believes, that the telcos are really excited about the form factor of something like the uh, HTC um, XR Elite. 
uh, because it's got this Wi-Fi VR experience, but it can actually leverage 5G to take the computing power off the headset. And that's what he says is gonna bring down a price, is that when 5G becomes uh, much better, or it kind of becomes the standard, that's gonna be able to enable them to, uh, enable them to offload the CPU and GPU computational requirements into the cloud because it'll happen without the latency that happens currently. And as soon as they can do that, they can really cut back on what hardware is in the actual headset itself. And at that point, that's when you're gonna start seeing a dramatic reduction of the price of these premium VR headsets. Uh, and yeah, it was just, I thought it was really interesting hearing him say that. Uh, potentially you've, you've heard that somewhere else before. I hadn't heard that somewhere else before. So I thought that was uh, an insight into, I guess, something that I've been finding a frustration in this scene is that the prices just have been staying too high for the mainstream consumer adoption that I want to see because I want to see bigger investment into the products and the games and experiences that that you can use with these VR headsets. VR headsets. Uh, but the reality is, is that you know that's not going to happen at a two thousand dollar plus price point, especially at a five and a half thousand dollar price point that Apple's pitching for the Pro Vision. So anyway. Couple of little insights there, straight from the horse's mouth at HTC. Uh, and just a little bit of extra bonus for you. Uh, I asked if the rival of something like the XR Elite meant there would never be an HTC Pro, through, Pro 3, and he wasn't comfortable with answering that question. So I repositioned it in a different way and said, is there room to have a Pro 3 and an XR Elite on the market at once? To which he responded after a pause, Yes, which says to me that there are plans for a Pro 3, uh, which I wasn't quite sure they were going to do, considering where they've been going with the uh, Flow and the Pro 3. Anyway, there you go. A couple of little insights. I'm Chris Dead. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until next time, yeehaw!